Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, DevFest, for having us. DevFest is one of our favorite conferences, as you may know, as we always come back. So IDR Solutions is a 25-year-old UK software company. We have clients all around the globe, and we help companies with their softwares to display PDF files on their web applications. So my name is Chika, and this is Mark. Hi. And for the next 20 minutes, we will entertain and educate you about how to use images, files, videos, documents in HTML5. We also have a stand. We did have free stickers, and we do have a couple left if you haven't had any already. So when we are done, please come and speak to us at our stand. So today, we are going to cover supporting image formats in HTML5, how to find out which formats are supported, and how to handle formats that are not supported in HTML5. And a fun fact, PDF files make up 70% of the world's documents, which is quite convenient because they're really easy to convert in, into different file formats. Let's take a look at supported image formats. So GIF, PNG, JPEG, and SVG, and WebP, which is the new kid on the block, are all supported in HTML5. On the other hand, AVIF, BMP, HEIC, JPEG 2000, JPEG XL, and TIFF are not supported in HTML5. GIF was really popular back in the day, but PNG is now more popular than GIF. PNG is a lossless file format, so when it's compressed and decompressed, it still keeps most of its details. However, JPEG is a lossy file format, so when it's compressed and decompressed, it loses some of its details and the image quality changes. That's mostly used for images, though. And SVG is a graphic format. So Mark is going to show an image tag demo for you guys. Okay, so if you hadn't guessed, Chica's the bright one of the group. She's here to do all the technical stuff. I'm just here to show the uh, cute cat pictures for you. So we've got some demos here. So this is uh, HTML tag, so let's have a look at this. So this is Mabel. Say hello to Mabel. Let's have a look at what the code looks like. So this is what you would see in HTML5. So we have a image tag. This isn't new to HTML5. I'm looking at it in the inspector. You can see there's an image. That's Mabel.jpg. So it's a supported file. It's being demonstrated. Uh, as before, you can have an alt value. You can have height and width. The values that are used for height and width are not coming off the image. They are coming off these parameters. So if we change some of these, it will change the actual size of the image. So let's squeeze Mabel down a bit. Okay, so if I go and have a look here, you can see... Uh, no, I think I prefer her like that. One of the nice things you can do in HTML5 is you can also use CSS. So you can change the values here. So Mabel's a girl, so let's give her a nice, big, pretty border. So let's change that to solid and pink. You can use any CSS to do it. Um, so you can quickly build nice effects in the image tag. The image tag can be a relative tag or it can be an exact location. Um, so that is a simple image tag. HTML5 introduced a more complex image tag. Um, so here's Lucy, also known as Lucifer because a habit of eating small birds constantly. But she's, she's either cute and cuddly or deadly. So again, we have the standard tag. We have the JPEG there. What HTML5 has introduced is a new concept. So we have a picture tag. So this code will still work in HTML4 or HTML3 too. But we have a picture tag now with an additional source tag. So we can specify different images. So if you have a page that you want displayed on mobile, you want it to be displayed on 32-inch screen, you can have different types of images. And you can have metadata, like the orientation of the image, which makes it easier for the browser to, to display, pick intelligently the images. So that is the image tag. Let's go back to the talk. So that's Mabel. That's the tags I mentioned. And that is Lucy. Slight advantage on HTML image tags. And uh, that is what you'd see. If you used an image which was incorrect or the image did not exist, you'd get that odd, just the alt text with no image. So that's the HTML5 image tag. Really easy way to display supported images within HTML5. Very simple to use. And now Chief is going to talk to you about video. So I'm going to go over some supported video formats. MP4, WebM, OGG, 
are all supported in HTML5. However, MLV, which is popular amongst Apple devices, is not supported. Apologies. And Mark will give a video tag demonstration. Right. Anyone want to guess what's going to appear in the video? Let's find out. Okay. So here's the video tag. And if you watch closely, I'll show you the video first, and I'll talk you through what's going on. So let's go full screen. And if you watch Lucy, four-second video. Yeah. OK, so let's look at the mechanics of that. So again, we're going to use the inspect function so I can show you guys the code. You get a full viewer in here. And in HTML5, you just have a simple video tag. You specify the width and height again. Again, that will make the video whatever size it is. Generally, you should be using the values of the image unless you want the user to be able to scale into it. Otherwise, you're being downloading more than you need. You have a controls tab as well. So if you remove that, um, you'll lose the controls tab, which makes it obviously a little bit less useful. There's no controls tab. Um, let's put it back again. But again, for one tag, you have sound, you have full screen, you have the option to loop through, you have the ability to interrupt, play the video. So what you get in HTML5, if it's a supported video format, is a really simple to use, easy built-in HTML5 video player, which works really nicely. So let's go back to video. Uh, that's video. Um, and let's move to audio. Let's go through the supported audio file formats. So MP3 is widely supported in HTML5. WAV is also supported along with OGG. However, ACC, which is mostly used on Apple platforms, is not supported. Mark will go through an audio tag demo. OK. so. So again, within HTML5, you get an audio player. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but this is going to be 18 seconds of Mabel purring. Mm. Nope, sorry, you can't hear Mabel, but you can see how she's being displayed. So again, we have an audio player built into all the HTML5 viewer browsers, uh, and we have an audio tag. We can turn off the controls. We can tell you which file it is. If it's an unsupported file, it just won't play. So that's why we're using MP3 here. But within a simple tag, we have a complete audio player with an HTML5 to allow the user to play audio with full audio control. So HTML5, if you have supported formats, is a really nice way to display content on web pages. And what I like, again, is there's very little coding to get a lot of functionality put in very quickly. So there's the tag. And let's move on to. Chica. <coughs> so today we spoke about many different file formats from audio to image. And you might be wondering how will you keep track of which ones are supported and aren't supported. So I would recommend you use the website Can I Use. So bookmark canIuse.com um, so that you can keep track of which formats are supported and aren't supported. I will show a demonstration now of how it works. Mark, can you help me, please? Yep. I can't see the site. Sorry, you want me to? It's on the. I just. Is it not going to come up in here? It's there. Okay. Is that what you want? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, if you want to see what TIFF is compatible with, just search TIFF, and as you can see, it's widely supported on most browsers, but not all the browsers. You can also check audio formats. So, let's take a look at. As you can see, this is widely supported. MP3 is widely supported. Um, let's also take a look at Heek. Heek, on the other hand, is only supported by Safari. So I recommend that you guys bookmark caniuse.com so you can easily find out which formats are supported and not supported for your future use. Mm. 
You're right, I'll do. Sorry, I want to go to the next slide. Yeah. Thank you. Another website that I'd recommend that you bookmark is the developer Mozilla. So this is really good if you're practicing your coding or you want to get into HTML5 coding. Do you want me to cut and paste it? Mike? Yes, please. Okay. So you can add onto previous code, you can make new code and you can run it. So we're going to demonstrate an example of a code that we've been working on recently for an ad on our website. And we'll show you how it runs. So if you're someone that is looking for a free platform to practice your HTML coding, then I would recommend that you also bookmark this website as well as caniuse.com. So as you can see on your right, this is our ad, and on the left, there is the code. Do you want me to pick it up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about other file formats. We spoke about some pretty simple file formats, but there are some more complicated ones. So image, audio, and video file formats are normally quite easy to work with. For example, you can easily convert HEIC into PNG, but there are harder file formats that are more complex to work with out there, such as ones that have multi-page layouts, like Office and PDF. Most documents can be converted into PDF, however, so if you can convert into PDF, you can do anything. But we're gonna go over some solutions for this dilemma. So you could just let your system open it based on the system defaults. You could use a plugin viewer, or you could convert to a supported file format. There are many open source um, solutions out there, as well as commercial ones, which we'll go through soon. But let's take a look at what happens when you use your system defaults. So although you may be sharing the same content in the documents that you're sharing around, they are presented differently depending on the browsers that you use to open them and also depending on the systems that you're using to open them as well. So we'll take a look. at the differences now. So we're going to open a HEIC file in both Safari and Chrome, and we'll look at how it appears different, and we'll do the same with a PDF file as well. It's a glitch on the screen. Just don't, it's a glitch on the screen. Okay. So as you can see, they both open differently. Um, on Chrome, it was downloaded and on Safari, it opened straight away. So let's take a look at the PDF files now. As you can see, the content looks similar, but the presentation is completely different. So the user experience will vary depending on the browser you use and the type of file, and there are also 
other reasons why it would vary. But there you go. Okay, so option one is to use the system defaults and just accept what it gives you, which isn't a great experience for most users, and also you can't guarantee what they're going to see on the platform. So your other options are... Okay. You can either use a viewer plugin. So you may be familiar with something like pdf.js, which is what is being used by Chrome. So Chrome, Safari, and Firefox all have their own built-in PDF viewers. There are pros and cons to this. You have to upload the file. Um, it's on the fly generally, so it's slower to open because you've got to put the whole file on the device. Um, it's much faster to change page or rescale because you can put it on there. If you're looking for a really good open source version, um, sorry, I'll come back to the example for a second. The other possibility is convert it. So what we do and what our customers do is they convert the PDFs on the server so they actually send just HTML to the file. Again, there are pros and cons to both, depending on what you're trying to achieve. If you want to have a detailed conversation on your use case, come and chat to us afterwards. Um, it's usually one time. You can pre-process it. Generates HTML. Uh, better integration with HTML apps. But at the same time, if you want to move between pages quickly or scale in, it's going to be slower because you've got a round trip to the server. So Office files as well. Um, this is a big topic. So I would suggest... Um, either using LibreOffice to convert it, or there's cloud options. So Azure actually offers you the option to convert files on the cloud using Microsoft's technology. We actually have an um, article on that, and if you take a quick screenshot of that, that's QR code to take you to the article, which is a tutorial on how to convert PDF files into HTML using Azure. You have three seconds. Three, two, one. If you want to do PDF files, um, Again, you can convert them. The trade-off is you're converting them into different languages. So there are different file types. Again, come and chat to us. We can bore you all day on that topic, pros and cons. Different ways to do it. Some tools just generate an image. We generate genuine HTML5. Quality varies. Um, so I want to look at some examples now. I'm conscious how tight time is. So again, if you want just a free viewer, pdf.js is what I would recommend. It's brilliant. It's open source. It's on GitHub. Um, go to it, download it. It has an API. You can build it in. It doesn't generate the world's greatest code, but for most people, that's not an issue. So if you're just looking for a free open source viewer, look no further than pdf.js. Um, there's an online demo there, which I'm going to leave. If you want to convert PDF to HTML5 on the server, the best open source tool is pdf to html.exe. Again, it's open source. It's available on GitHub. There's an online demo. Um, you know, give it a try. Uh, our product is a commercial version. If you want to use it, you can use it for free. Um, there is a free online converter. That is the QR code. Um, so if you want to convert files, just a few files, give it a go. Uh, commercial version we have for bulk use. And pretty much spot on time, I think. Last slide is yours. Thank you guys for listening. If you have any questions, please let us know. It was really lovely to speak to, speak to you guys here today. And I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that was Chica's first talk, but you wouldn't have known it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.